Hallelujah. For you to enjoy the relationship with the Holy Spirit, there are a few things that as a child of God or as a believer that you need to do for you to grow that intimate relationship. For them that are in a relationship, or whether you are married or you are having you are having a close friend that you can confine to, or whether you are having a colleague that you love so much to talk to. Uh, it has been a journey you have grown that relationship you did not become intimate as strangers so there are steps in life that you have taken for your relationship to become close to become intimate even for them that are married like me you did not wake up one morning you met your spouse and you got married you walked a journey you walked a journey of friendship you walked a journey of talking you walked a journey of SMSs you know of even going out together until the relationship matured to a level that you became intimate to an extent that you get to move to somebody's house so it has to have a process of growth it have it have a process of growth and for you as a child of God or as a human you can start to grow your intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit by prayer through prayer prayer is very key why prayer prayer is where we communicate is where we communicate with the Holy Spirit. When you communicate with a friend, you express you. When you communicate with somebody you trust, you are able to understand that person. You are able to learn the language of that person. You are able to know what he likes and what he doesn't like. It is only through communication that you are able to open up to somebody. When you have fears in life, you are able to confine. And I want you to understand my viewer that uh, the Holy Spirit is a person he understands he hears you can address him uh, many of us many of the children of God are so much you know used to praying to God but you can also talk to the Holy Spirit directly as a friend and as a helper praise be to Jesus for two people to keep a relationship for two people to keep a friendship there is that communion there is that talking so for you to continue in that deep relationship with the Holy Spirit you need to keep talking to him where you go and talk to him and you can only talk to the Holy Spirit through prayer so prayer is very key when you are building your relationship with the Holy Spirit hallelujah I am expecting you are saying an amen from wherever you are without communication in every relationship the friendship dies it is not that you have offended each other it is not that you are tired of each other but if communication is cut off from the two of you what happens is the relationship dies if you are married if you have a, a, a relative you have not talked to each other for long you realize that you don't relate closely why because there is no communication so it is important for us to encourage communication in every relationship and more so the relationship with the holy spirit learn to separate you when i talk about prayer it is not everything that is discussed everywhere so the kind of a prayer i'm talking about it is not a prayer that we make as a prayer of increment it is not a prayer that we pray as a, a as a group it is not a prayer that we pray when we are going to sleep when we gather all of us as a family and say let's pray and go and sleep it's not a prayer that we pray when we are starting meetings where we work or wherever we are it's not a prayer when the when one person leads us into prayer when we are just praying all of us when i talk about prayer i am talking about you must separate time for prayer hallelujah you must separate time for the holy spirit i want you to agree with me that for every relationship to be intimate and to be close there is that creation of time you purpose and you plan to meet each other you purpose and you create time for each other so that you can have discussions so that you can be having you know just that time of you know of talking one-on-one -on -one. that is the time you are growing your relationship intimately so you must plan and purpose to separate you so that you can be with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone don't be in a rush when you are in that moment don't be in a rush take time with the Holy Spirit 
uh, intimacy requires time. Intimacy requires one to be intentional. You must be purposeful. You must purpose to be with him. Why do you separate? You separate from distractions. There are so many things that distract people when they are having the young good times. There are so many things that are surrounding us. There are so many things that are, you know, that are coming up in life. When you want to concentrate on a thing, when you want to be focused, when you want to have time for a thing, it is important for you to switch off your phone. It is important for you to be in a secluded place. It is important for you to be separated from everything. Even our children, you separate from everything that can cause distraction. Buana asifiwe. This will help you to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say. Because when I talk about prayer, it's a moment when you pray. He listens to you. He hears you. Then you keep quiet. You get those quiet moments and you hear him talk to you. This is the moment that a wand is dropped in your spirit. This is a moment that a, an idea comes to you. When you are not in a hurry, intimacy requires time, my dear brothers and sisters. Intimacy requires that moment of silence, and you kind of soak, you kind of think what has just happened. Buana Apewe Sifa. I want you to know that God loves intimacy. God loves intimacy. Nothing is born of God in public places. I tend to believe God is a man. Nothing is born of God in public places. Hallelujah. God talked to Mary and not Joseph. And you should remember that when God was talking to Mary about the birth of Jesus Christ, he knew, God knew because there is nothing that can be hidden to, from him, that is. He knew that Mary was having a relationship. Mary was in courtship with Joseph. But he knew this is a private matter for Mary. It was for Mary to get the message, embrace the report, internalize the message. Then he can be able to handle Joseph. Hallelujah. I tend to believe that the angel timed when the angel was released, if you read in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 35, the Bible says, The angel answered unto the Mary, and to, uh, answered unto her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Praise the Lord. And the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. Mary, and she conceived without a man. What am I saying? The angel typed, this is the gospel according to me, the angel typed when Mary was not with Joseph. Because this was specifically for Mary. It was private and confidential. There are, there, there are documents and there are notes, there are reports that come to you and they are private and confidential. Praise be to Jesus. And do you know why God had to intervene? God had to send an angel to Joseph just for the sake of the relationship. Not because he wanted this gentleman to know it was for Mary and Mary. What am I saying? God loves privacy. God loves privacy. So there are things that God will only bath. There are things that you will only bath for God in a private place, in secrecy. Hallelujah. There are things that are born without a man. There are things that are born without men. And that's why intimacy is not in studying. That's why intimacy is not in, uh, in the crossroads. It is not around the sides of the road. It is in a place. It is in a place where it is. there is that sense of privacy. Hallelujah. So God is calling on us that we can be able to separate us for a certain time, for a certain moment when we have purposely focused on Him and him alone without distractions without thinking about our future without thinking about anything else but the holy spirit and the holy spirit alone praise be to jesus he enables you the holy spirit enables you to do what things people that you could not do he enables you 
to participate in matters that you yourself you never understood you could do. When you look at the story of Mary, maybe in the in, in, in the city, Mary was not the favorite of men, but God chose him because he does not seek the opinion of men, but he seek the counsel of his own will. God seek the counsel of his own will concerning what he will do with you. Therefore, you need to separate yourself. You need to have time with the Holy Spirit so that you can be able to understand your purpose and why God has praised you where you are. Something else I want to mention is you need to get a closet. You need to get a closet. Intimacy happens in closets. When you pray, enter into a closed place. Every child of God must learn to say to stay in a closet. Many people are very good in prayer, but they cannot pray alone. They must be in a crowd of people. They must be where there is a worship team that is leading you into prayer. There, there is somebody who is leading you into song. There is somebody who has a list of prayer items. Brothers and sisters, if we will have an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit, we must grow to a level where we are separated alone in a closet. Because you should note, and I've mentioned this, that intimacy does not happen in public places. It happens in a closet. Boy, as if he were. If you read in the book of Matthew 6, verse 6, Matthew verse 6, chapter 6, the Bible says, but when you pray, close your door, shut your door behind you, hallelujah, and pray in private to our heavenly Father. When you pray, close the door before, uh, behind you, shut the door behind you, and pray in private. To our heavenly father why would the bible encourages us to pray in private because there are things that i believe i can be able to achieve in life and i want to communicate to the holy spirit but maybe even my closest friend doesn't buy in for that there are things i want to pray privately to the holy spirit there are things i want to address and you know I want us to remember that you could be having inner issues that you cannot handle in public. It is in the prayer closet where you are able to address the inner battles. And when you have won the inner battles in prayer closet, you are able to win the outward battle. Hallelujah. I'm getting excited when I understand the purpose of being in a separate place, in a closet with the Holy Spirit. If you read in Luke 11 verse 1, Jesus was praying in a certain place. In every time that Jesus was praying, he was not just praying. The Bible is very clear. It tells us that he was praying on mountains. He was praying on a specific place. Pray that God may help you to identify where is your closet. It could be in your house. You have chosen a certain place. You have chosen. When children have slept, you go to the sitting room. If it's, if it's a small house, you, you don't have many rooms. You get a specific place where you go down and kneel and pray to God. Pray for your children. Pray for your dreams. Pray for your future. Pray for your, you know, for your family. Pray for your business. Pray for everything. And when you pray for your purpose in life, you shall be having a fulfilling life life in our prayer closet this is where you develop the fruit of the spirit this is where you develop the fruit of the spirit this is where you get enlarged of your heart you get an enlarged heart to love people when you love people you are able to intimately relate with the holy spirit because the holy spirit loves and dwells where there is love in the prayer closet is where you are able to address your traumas. This is where the Holy Spirit will be able to address your pain. This is where the Holy Spirit will be able to address and work on your fears. This is where the Holy Spirit will be able to redeem your mind, to redeem your heart, and to redeem your life. It can only happen in the prayer closet because intimacy does not happen in public places. The Holy Spirit will treat you. The Holy Spirit will heal you and he will lift you. Praise be to Jesus. You derive strength from the Spirit of God from this moment of intimacy. You derive strength. You 
derive wisdom. You derive power from the, the Spirit of God when you take time with Him, when you are in that moment of intimacy with God. I thank God for each and every one of us. Let's desire to be full of the Holy Spirit. Let's desire, let's purpose to have an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. And in every relationship, there is what you bring. You are not just coming for. Don't come to God to pray with a shopping basket. It is a bad habit that you always pop to somebody's house when you are in need. It is bad manners that you call somebody when you need something, when you need some assistance, when you need help from that person. It is honorable, it is acceptable, it is good moral to call your friends, to talk to them even when you don't need anything, just to check on them. Therefore, as the children of God, you need to create those moments when you just go to check on the Holy Spirit. Wake up one morning and say, Holy Spirit, how have you been? This is another day that we will walk together. Sometimes as friends, sometimes, uh, you know, as, as spouses, we just text. We just as a man, just to tell somebody, just to express you how you feel about somebody, you can also go to the Holy Spirit and address him and tell him, Holy Spirit, I love you. I love it when you guide my life. I love it when you direct me. I love it when you encourage me. I love it when you strengthen me. Glory be to God. The way you do it on physical relationships, you can do it with the Holy Spirit. And it will bring tremendous power in your life. You realize that you are not wasted because he is continually with you and he is guiding you. Buana Apewe Sifa. May the Lord bless you as you purpose to create a relationship and to grow your intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Shalom. God bless you. Let's pray. Our Father and our God in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you and we honor you because you are faithful. We pray and agree in Jesus' name that you will help us, you will enable us, dear loving master, to be people of prayer, to be people who are intentionally working on our relationship with you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we worship you for you are our helper. You are our guide. You are our comforter. You encourage us when we need you. You give us solutions to life. You communicate to us and you show us the way. Therefore, in Jesus' name, we love you and we appreciate you. And we purpose today in Jesus' name that we shall work on our relationship with you. Help us in Jesus' name. We pray and we give thanks. Amen and amen. Somebody, you can say amen from wherever you are and you are blessed. Purpose to work on your relationship with the Holy Spirit. God bless you. I love you so much. Thank you.